also believe it is their right to speak out against the occupation. Included among them are Jewish American rabbis. For their refusal to keep silent, they too have suffered threats and intimidation. One part of that intimidation has been to say that any Jew who raises criticisms about a current Israeli policy is a self-hating Jew. But on the contrary, my criticisms and Tikkun Magazine's criticisms of Israeli policy flow directly from our commitment to Judaism and our love for the Jewish tradition and our insistence that it be taken seriously, not just as a bunch of empty words, but as a set of principles that we really take seriously and believe in. The Israeli public relations machine knows that if the views and voices of Jews who disagree with its policies were to become public, it would be impossible to maintain the lie that any criticism of Israel is by definition anti-Semitic. In fact, the accusation of anti-Semitism has been Israel's most effective strategy in silencing dissent, and American journalists in particular have been targets of this tactic. Any environment in which a journalist or any person steps forward and starts making serious criticism of Israel, of America's relationship with Israel, the unconditional support for Israel, the failure of any serious pressure to be put upon Israel by the United States to prevent the building of further settlements for Jews and Jews only on Arab land. Any suggestion that the war between the Israelis and the Palestinians is a colonial war will be met by a deafening chorus of accusations, slanderous and lying though they are, that the person who brings up that subject is in some form an anti-Semite or a racist. And this remains the constant weapon that is used. The fact that anti-Semitism is alive and well in the world today makes it all the more important to differentiate between real anti-Semitism that needs to be condemned and opposed in its own right and its misuse as a PR strategy. Trying to scare people into silence by conflating any criticism of Israeli policies with anti-Semitism in fact detracts from the very real threat that anti-Semitism does pose. Because there are anti-Semites in the world, there are racists. And if this continued campaign of abuse against decent people, trying to shut them up by falsely accusing them of anti-Semitism continues, the word anti-Semitism will begin to become respectable. And that is a great danger. And then the really bad guys and they're around. They do. There are people who want to build, burn synagogues, just like there are people who want to burn mosques. They'll start coming into their own. Through its unconditional support for Israel, the American government has become one of the biggest obstacles to achieving peace. Consequently, the struggle for peace and justice in the Middle East will have to be waged here in the United States. Because the United States has primary responsibility for this. Uh, there's nothing either anti-Semitic or uh, being a self-hating Jew and condemning U.S. policies which underlie massive atrocities and have, and have been blocking a peaceful settlement. I've led the, new, the world pretty close to war several times, nuclear war. Uh, these are things that we ought to be concerned about. I mean, what Israel does, it's for them to worry about. Uh, what we do is for us to worry about. Americans need to wake up and find out what's happening in their name throughout the world. They have a responsibility. Um, if they pretend to live in a democratic society, which is being eroded in terms of how democratic it is, to find out what your government is supporting, what it's doing overseas in your name with your tax dollars. I mean, people here do not want to send helicopters to uh, uh, attack civilians. You know, they, uh, if, if people kn know what's going on in the occupied territories, they're not going to want to support it. I mean, any more than they support other uh, atrocities that... Uh, we're responsible for, so you keep it quiet. Uh, re describe it as a defense against terrorism, not as a brutal military occupation which is evoking resistance. If U.S. policy shifts, the coverage will shift. The occupation doesn't serve security, and if the American public opinion will come to understand this very truth that we believe in, we hope that the administration, that the president will do whatever he can in order to help to facilitate a peace talks which will bring end to the occupation on one hand 
safety and security to Israel on the other hand and decent life for the Palestinians as he suggested in his speech. He said it very beautifully but he's doing nothing about it. The only way that Israel will have peace and security is by making peace with our neighbors. The only way that we will have a safe Israel is by making a just peace with the Palestinians. Their struggle in many ways is a just struggle. What are they struggling? They're struggling for a state. We in Israel have a state. The American people have a state. Why shouldn't the Palestinian people have a state?